Dear Hector, you know how the Brits go on about the weather all the time, the Americans talk about health and the royals, the Australians are preoccupied with sport and sex? Well, Bass conversation revolves around food. The night air is alive with passionate thoughts on how to make the perfect fish omelette and spicy stews, where to find the freshest of tappers, what fish are in season, and so on. You see, there is a very old saying in this country, in the south they fry, in the middle they bake, and in the north they cook. I think it was probably a Basque who coined that. comes either from the rugged coast or the mountains, and it's natural for families to eat in the open air. But belying this happy gathering, there is a serious streak that puts food of the region on par with its fierce streak of independence. Dishes like shanguru, spider crab, its white flesh mixed with peppers, onion, garlic and brandy. Oh, and this, you'd love this one, Hector, freshly grilled tuna covered in a spicy tomato sauce and pimentos, the colours of the Basque flag. Tonight I've got to cook a dinner for 10 or 12 people that I've never met before. I don't know what sort of food they cook, and here in San Sebastian I don't really know what the local styles are. But the only way to find out is to go to the market to have a look round, because I've cooked a lot of fish, but maybe I should change it. Maybe I should rabbit, or pigeons, or partridges, or beef, or tripe, I don't know. The only way to find out is to look round. It's a bit like deciding to paint a picture first Choose your colours. So, Clive, if it's okay with you, and do mind the old ladies behind you, because it is a public market, we'll go off and do a bit of shopping. Here's a little thing that fascinates me. I'm sure I've seen these flowers in the hedgerows of Devon. I don't know what they're called. They're pimpernels, pimpernels, or something like that. Anyway, they tell me that here, they boil them up in an infusion, you drink the infusion, and it purifies your blood. Maybe if they've got a few hundred weight, I should hope it's sent round to my hotel. Anyway. What I really need is some tomatoes. This is real shopping now. Por favor, dos kilos de tomatoes uh, maduros. Gracias. I love shopping, and incidentally, it's a great way to pick up the language. But what I like about the market is the fact that people stay in touch with each other on a daily basis. We've lost that at home, I feel. Modern hypermarkets aren't conducive to idle, friendly chit-chat. This market has all the attractions of an exciting exhibition. But what to cook? Plump, freshly shot pigeon attempting? No. Or these fabulous home-cured sausages, highly spiced with pimento, and delicious hams that came from the black pig who spent its days snuffling acorns in the mountains? Underrated by many, but celebrated in Spain, rabbit, or as they say over here, corneco. Dos corneco, por favor. Two rabbits, if you please. Now you try and say it at home. I think I'll cook them in red peppers, and garlic will go well too. But you know, Hector, they even take the nasty stringy bits off the beans for you. Consider it people, these Basques. No más. Muchas gracias. Ah, look, Clive, close in here. This is what I mean. Little chopped bits of fatty bacon, bits of sausage, bits of ham. An absolutely perfect thing to sauté my rabbit in. Or indeed chicken, or any other meaty thing you want to make a stew from. It really enriches the stew. Excellent stuff. Right, on with some more shopping. Anyway, I think that's enough markets now. This is a cooking programme, not great markets of the world. And this is a gastronomic society, founded in 1870 by men who wanted to cook for their families and their workmates and chums, because this is by and large a very matriarchal society where, once upon a time, there was no place for the husband over the kitchen stove. Just think of it, men who would work in hot factories or fishing boats and in banks would rush home, desperate to cook lunch or perhaps a light dinner, only to be told it was not their place to do so. So they formed their own societies, a society where women were forbidden to cook in their kitchen. And it's not one of those weak macho excuses for an almighty binge, it's taken seriously and members learn from each other. Swapping ideas and recipes in a spirit of good-natured competition. These societies should be worldwide, you know. Much more fun than swilling lager in the pub night after night. Do you know, in seven years of making these programmes, this is the most extraordinary kitchen I've ever been in my life. It's a private club, but it's not an elitist club. It's a club of men, they may be road diggers, they may be bus drivers, maybe barristers, who want to get together and cook, and cook 
for fun. And my God, this is a kitchen full of love that I've never seen in my life before. Anyway, we'll need more of that as we go along because I've been made not remember. I've got to cook them something. I must do it real. I must do it properly because I'm just an English guy and in their sacred environments. So Clive, a quick spin around the ingredients, please. We have some wild rabbit. The dish focuses on red peppers and also a load of tomatoes I've got cooking elsewhere. Over to here a little bit, some finely chopped pieces of mountain ham and sausage, garlic, back this way a little bit, and onions. And that, roughly speaking, is the dish. Because here in San Sebastian, they don't overspice or overherb their foods. Things are actually very simple. They look good, but they're very straightforward. So, onto the pot here, and the first thing I have to do is brown this rabbit. Now, in fact, I'm cooking for about nine or ten people here, although 45 have turned up, and they're all around us at the moment. He's, he's cooking pork, which is absolutely... Excuse me, guys. Yeah, I mean, I'm up to some really stiff competition here, one way or another, so I have to do it properly. Clive, it'll take 15 minutes or so to brown this lot. No one wants to spend 15 minutes watching rabbits brown. So take a spin around and see what the other guys have been doing. Wonderful dishes like hake and prawns in olive oil, saffron and wine, Oh, and these live ameccas, sweet little things, lie a few inches under the sand and send out this long tube and suck in their nourishment until they're unceremoniously scooped up and eaten, that is. They're wonderful cooked in a wine and parsley sauce, lightly seasoned with garlic. The atmosphere is truly great, but I can't imagine a coven of barristers or a gang of trap players doing this in Britain. Can you? Right. So that's browned beautifully. What I did rather earlier, because the other important part of this dish is onions and tomatoes. Over here, Clive, you can come right in, big fat close up, please. Finely chopped onions and tomatoes, stewing away in olive oil, okay? It'll all be revealed as we go along. We just put some pepper in. I don't need to follow the pepper, they know what pepper looks like. Right, pepper into that. Next thing is some garlic. So down here, now we've cut this quite crudely with the bits of skin on and all, just to give it the extra flavor. all quite good. That goes into the pot. We have our garlic. And then to really enhance the flavor, I've got this lovely 200 grams or so of chopped, fatty mountain ham and sausage and things of that kind. In all that goes. Can I have a quick slurp? Because as I, as I have said, I've just been so touched by the atmosphere in this place, you know. They really do care and love what they're doing. And they're not scrubbing, that's my knife, those are my ingredients. I mean, this could be an alternative form of Christianity. This could be a way to actually live a life. Sharing, cooking, eating and smiling and really going for it in a very happy way. Anyway, on with some more. Can you give me a slurp? <laughs> Excellent singing, but they're singing about the joys of food, of crabs and cheeses and potatoes and wine. But getting back to the kitchen, my onions and tomatoes are well reduced down now, a lovely thick rich sauce. So I pop in the rabbit, which has been fried in olive oil and garlic, really nicely browned, pop back into the tomatoes, get all the juices out if you can and of course all the little pieces of ham. Then I put the red peppers back into the rabbit juice, sear them for a little bit, and mix them with the rabbit and the tomatoes. Put that on, let it simmer for a bit. There's the rabbit. Stay there, Clive. Here are the peppers. Now I'm gonna put these peppers on the top of the whole thing to make so that they will be lightly steamed in the juices from the rabbit. You ready for this one? And now for the moment of truth. And although I'm sure they're very kind, my reputation is on the line. I must admit, I couldn't have cooked this better had I been in my own kitchen. 
I was really pleased with it. It smelt delicious, the sauce was the right consistency and colour. It was, to my mind, done to perfection. But what would El Presidente say? Okay. Muy bueno. Muy bueno. All right. All right. <laughs> Aren't they Welsh? Aren't they Russian? Aren't they Celtic? What are they? Isn't that music outstanding? Anyway, I've done all I can do. I'm going out on the town now. <laughs> In San Sebastian, it's usual, after a siesta, to don your best clothes and take the air, observing as much as you can of your fellow man or woman. This is a ritual that's been played with grace and dignity since time immemorial, and it's a wonderful way, invigorated by the fresh sea air, to work up an appetite. Dinner in Spain doesn't usually happen till half past nine or even ten o'clock, but it really starts around seven with a glass or two and then tapas. But what I like is the children with their parents and grandparents. They can all share in the fun too. This is a brilliant tapas bar run by my latest chum, Hoseba, a fierce past cook. Guys, where are you? Trying to explain to the cousins what we've got here. These are what? Little red pimentos. This is red pimento roasted, the skin, then uh, prepared with garlic and oil. And they are, most of them are hot. They're Excellent. very good. Enjoy your life. Great. Then these little anchovies. These are anchovies and uh, marinated in salt and vinegar, and then with a bit of fine garlic. I mean, enjoy. Mm. Good. Very good. Egg and potato is, yes. obviously. Yes. yes. This is a dry cod omelet. What salted, omelet? Salted, salted cod omelet. omelet. Right. Must try, try that. Try it. It's very good. And brand new and hot as well. That's brilliant. This is. Mmm. It's hot, but it's fabulous. What's your life? I can see that that's a uh, fish row. Which fish is that from? This is a uh, hake. Hake? 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 Why is hake yeah. so popular yeah, in Spain? Well, I mean, for us, it's the queen of the fish. The queen of the fish. That's yeah. interesting, isn't it? And they're nicking it all from our shores as well, by the way. Oh, I didn't say that. I'm sorry, Spain. This is octopus. Yep. Is there octopus? I mean, just to catch you before you go without pain. Right, right. You know I mean? I get it. I get it. <laughs> a, so this one's in... This um, is with vinaigrette. vinaigrette. And this one is with a hot paprika and oil. And olive oil. I keep referring to many of these tasty plates of food as Spanish. In fact, I should have said Basque. But I'm not terribly well versed in the differences, so I asked Hosiba to explain. Nothing to do with it. I mean, we are Basque, that is Spaniard. We are in the same state, I mean, but well, here we are. So, we are enjoying food and drink and all these things for thousands of years, and we are going to continue for millions of years, and nobody is going to change us. Brilliant, I'll drink to that. <laughs> Now, when I meet anyone with a white face who pretends to climb up an invisible wall, I usually cross the street. But now I had an appetite to explore other varieties of tapas, of which there are hundreds involving meat, fish, shellfish and vegetables. In fact, the whole nine yards. You know, as a matter of fact, Quaro couldn't have followed the clues better than I am. This is Tapas Bar 3 and I'm really getting the feel of this place. I know where the body is going to be. Come on in, Clive. Yeah. You can be a pauper in this place and yet live like a king. Because these small snacklets only cost a few potatoes each. But by having one judiciously here and then again there and perhaps back here again a little later, you can have a whole wide selection of really succulent, tasty things. Pig's tongues, fish, octopus, squid, spicy sausages, little vegetable things, deep fried peppers. It truly is magnificent. Anyway, Clive, back on that, because that was a bit long piece of camera. <laughs> Uh, 
Some of these tapas look like elegant cream cakes, but in fact they consist of freshly made mayonnaise, salmon, smoked trout, Atlantic prawns and squid loaded on fresh rolls baked that afternoon. Honestly, this gastronomic detective voyage is going terribly well. This must be now, I think, um, the uh, Cezio or the Six or something like that. Anyway, let's see what they have to offer here. Because you see, the Spanish are nightmare. They buzz, they chatter, they walk up and down, they flash their eyes at one another, they parade past each other, and all the while, they're eating and drinking. Come on in. If you can. Now, see, actually, Clive, we're getting a bit more into the bread, eggs, and vegetables in this particular tapas bar. And I have one of those too. Gracias. See, this is quite nice, isn't it? Pimento, red and green pimento, and a bit of egg and some bread. Now, that should, after a few tintos and lots of meat and lots of pig's tongue and lots of fish, this is quite fortifying and comforting. And very, very tasty. Now, if you're going to open a tapas bar, remember these snacks are only so tasty because they're made not at nine o'clock in the morning and served until they run out, but every few minutes, so they're always fresh. The kitchens here never stop, and bar owners know they'd soon go out of business if they served something that didn't have a recent association with the sea. Early in San Sebastian, when you hit Tapas Bar after Tapas Bar, it's nice to walk along the port, to walk along the boulevards, and start to reflect a bit about things. Maybe take a coffee, maybe take a little cognac, something like that, just to wind down what has been a really good day. I always like to include a real fishing trip in these little programs, but today is Sunday and they're having the day off, eating tapas, no doubt. So I bought some fish and hired a pleasure boat instead. Around about 11 o'clock in the morning, the hard-working Basque man or woman stops for a little break. But they don't have a cup of tea like we do. They have a glass of very young, fruity white wine called Chacali. And they do pour it from this great height, even though they might spill a drop, to get some air into it, because it tastes better that way. Although, between you and I, that's a matter of opinion. It's a bit sharp for me. Anyway, what I'm going to cook today is a typical Basquets dish, much loved by the fishermen here. They cook it on board when they're coming back from the trawling grounds or going out to the trawling grounds. And the most favoured version of it is contains tuna fish. You can use cod or hake or any other firm flesh fish, but the best of all is tuna. So, Clive, before I fall off the prow, very high prow, this typical Spanish boat, could I have a quick spin round the ingredients, please, which are down here. First of all, a lovely chunk of fresh tuna. Over to your right, and we have, I know the boat's a bit wobbly, sorry about that, Clive. We've got potatoes, lovely sweet Spanish onions, garlic, tomatoes, and green peppers. You can use red peppers if you like, and some olive oil down there somewhere. Now this is a traditional Basque dish, the sort of thing on those cold nights when they're hauling nets, or maybe fat, full nets, maybe empty nets. This is what they look forward to, to build themselves up after a gruelling time at sea, as they charge up and down this coast, which, by the way, is quite a lot like the Cornish coast. I made several phone calls to some of my academic chums to find out where the Basque came from. Well, they all had a joy long think, and no one seems to know. We know that they call their land Uskadi, and many seem to think they came from the Caucasus in Russia thousands of years ago. They're a silent, determined lot that remind me of the Bretons. They also remind me of the people of the Isles of Scilly. They're fiercely independent and don't suffer fools gladly. I might have a problem there. So what we need is a pot of sliced potatoes and sliced onions in some water. The last ones are just going in now. Swing over there, Clive. You'll see I've got the water in there, loads of onions, loads of potatoes sliced like that. One more onion to go. And we are on a fishing boat, you know, we are rocking and rolling on this sea here, so there's bound to be a few slips and a few errors, and the guys are here just driving the boat, having a glass, like good fishermen do. Right. Onions then, and potatoes in the pot, simmering gently away. Next thing, as far as I'm concerned, is a quick slurp. Oh, 
gosh, that's much nicer than the white wine they like so much around here. Then drive a load of chopped tomatoes into there as well, like that. Stirred round really well. Potatoes, onions, and tomatoes. Then, because of course it is the Basque country, a load of chopped peppers, three in this instance. I've taken the, um, the pith out of the peppers, Clive. I've taken the pith and the pips out of the peppers, Clive, and I've popped them in there, Clive, you see? Right, so that's the base of our fisherman's pot. Then a load in here, I've got a load of crushed garlic, parsley, salt, and pepper. It's all in this pot because on a boat, you can't have these things flying around the place. So they all go in to season it. Now, that's simmering gently away there. Can I just make a point here? We're going to be using the luxury of tuna fish on this. So we're going to put the tuna fish in straight away because it's cut quite thickly and it takes a long time to cook. But if we were using cod or hake, less strong fish, we'd let this cook away for about 10 minutes before we added the fish. Otherwise, the vegetables would be raw and the fish would be overcooked. We're aiming to get the vegetables Supp supple and tender and unctuous and the fish flaky all at the same time. So as I say, because it's tuna, that goes in more or less straight away. But first, slice your tuna. One tuna, two tunas, this is enough for a lot of people really. I'll just trim it up a little bit so we don't get too many nasty bits on the edge the edges off there. Right. Now, stay there, Clive, because I've forgotten the salt. I need a bit more salt. There's only over here. It's a good idea to rub a little salt into the steaks. Okay. The tuna steaks onto the top. That's one. <laughs> two, three, and then to complete the authenticity of this very typical bass dish, this is the one they use to eat when they're out fishing. It's potatoes, it's onions, it's peppers, it's water, it's tuna fish, it's garlic, it's parsley, it's salt and it's pepper, and of course, some olive oil. And that's going to simmer away now for about 45 minutes until the potatoes and the onions absorb the juice and the fish is cooked. In the meantime, I'm going to join the chaps and have a little glass of wine with them. So, OK, I don't speak any Basque or Spanish come to that, but I do believe that if diplomats swap their grey suits for a cook's apron from time to time, the world would be a happier place. Anyway, this stew simmered away for another 20 minutes or so, or three glasses of wine, depending on how you measure time, and then it's ready to serve. I think as a piece of cooking, it stands up. <coughs> what they think remains to be seen. Acostumbramos. Ya los costumbres, eh? They liked it. They really liked it. Of course, it's criticism. I should have cooked the onions a bit longer, and while we're at it, the potatoes weren't exactly to their liking. But I think, for the first time out, it's been a hit. A palpable hit. Or indeed, a palatable hit. Clive loves these bits. He gets up really early in the morning to capture the soft mist that swells the grape on the vine and kisses the corn. And also, it gives you, the viewer, a break from me. Anyway, to the east of the Basque region is the northern part of the Riochan Alavesa vineyards, where the countryside changes dramatically. The Moors were driven out of Spain and the Romanesque style began. First from the north, here as in La Guardia, where it was pure, but further south it was often grafted onto Moorish foundations. Oh, that's a fish shop, by the way. In the 13th century, the most popular style was Gothic. But then, finally, the whole thing was affected by the Renaissance. And now, you know just as much as I do about architecture, because it all came from the boys' bumper book of architecture. But you know how keen my director is on those sketches. But as for me, cherries are the things. Mmm, they're quite the nicest I've had this season. And you know what they say? Life. It's just a bowl of cherries, as long as you've got most of them. 
Sí, sí, sí. Algo como... no, que hacer un poco de malabarismo eh, se puede ver, pero... What a magnificent spot. You know, this is exactly the place to do one of those thinking sketches. You know, where you just gaze out over the vineyards. While Clive looks at the view, you hear my voice revealing philosophical things about Rioja wine. Growers from Rioja Alta might disagree, but the Trempanillo grape thrives on the pale yellow clay soil of the Alavesa, and the Mediterranean climate with cool winters helps produce soft, fruity red wines from what is undoubtedly Rioja's finest grape. And I drank bottles of this soft red wine with its lovely blackberry flavour with no hangovers. By the way, Clive, I want to stick the fire up there. Excuse me. Perfect, 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 perfect. Do you know, I think I must be one of the luckiest chaps in the whole world. I travel it, I eat it, I drink it, I smell it and I touch it. But despite the fact that I sometimes get chauffeured in limousines, live on the penthouse floors of luxury hotels, that can be sometimes a little boring. It's really good to get out into the country, into this magnificent countryside of the northern Rioja, where they grow wonderful wine, where they shoot wonderful game, where they make brilliant sausages, where they grow superb tomatoes, where they make wonderful things for us to enjoy and me to show you. So what I thought I'd do, get away from all the hurly-burly of hotel life, have a simple barbecue and a simple salad, which brings me on to the first little bit. I just finished off my salad. I'll add some more of this. It's only simply, come in, Clive, it's only very simply sweet Spanish onions, crunched lettuce, tomatoes slightly green because I find them with a wonderful flavour and crumpled into that some local two-day-old cheese. Now, I know I'm using my fingers, but I'm eating it, so don't worry about it. Bit of vinegar and a good dollop of olive oil and there you have it. Okay, right, back to me, Clive, please. I've been asking people around the place what do they eat. Well, here, they don't eat octopus and gambas and paella. They're more meaty people. They make wonderful, down, down here, very close to me, Clive, they make wonderful spicy red sausages. They make superb black puddings that people in Blackpool will be proud of. They get quail from the mountainside and grill it, and they get wonderful legs of goat, but, and I kid ye not, <laughs> that's a good pun, isn't it? I didn't mean to say that. But the thing that really excels here is the lamb. Several times I've eaten lamb, it has been the most succulent, the most delicious I've ever tasted. So, I've got these wonderful hot coals, and I've got these wonderful thin slivers of young, young lamb. Oh, by the way, just before I carry on, a tip here, lots of you barbecue, never barbecue until the coals look like these look, okay? Never put things on while the flames are still there. So very important, because this, after all, is a little cookery program, and the odd tip is useful. Anyway, those go onto the thing. Sizzle, sizzle, sizzle away. They'll, because they're so small, they'll probably only take two or three minutes. This is a good feast for me, isn't it? I was going to have some chums with me, but um, they couldn't make it. Now, it's only the spade falling over, don't worry about it. What else does Rioja have to offer? What has Rioja done for us, I hear you cry? What it's done for us, and I'm a wine drinker, little old wine drinker, I've tasted wine from California to Cadiz. But one of the finest wines I've tasted is this Rioja. You can have it young, you can have it old, but it's here, it's made to be enjoyed. Right, as you wish, close up on the Barbie, which is, after all, my portrait of Northern Rioja, or on the countryside, which is their portrait of Rioja.